G'day guys. Got a couple of uh, uh, spectrum analyzers here which are specifically designed for very, very low frequency work. I think they go down to about 400 millihertz and uh, got a range of up to uh, 100 kilohertz. I've got a um, SR760 and an SR770. Both of these work perfectly fine. Uh, I haven't used them lately, so I thought that uh, rather than just have them sit here and hang around, I should uh, sell them or send them off to a better home, someone who will actually use them. I've got a, a spectrum analyzer sitting down the cupboard there, uh, which does the frequency range. Uh, it's a Hewlett Packard thing anyway. It does the same frequency range of these ones. I was uh, actually just swapping out some test equipment, so I thought that maybe if uh, you're interested, um, the SR760 um, uh, FFT spectrum analyzer, they're uh, fast Fourier transform spectrum analyzers. Um, the what the 760 on the top there, as you can see the inputs there, it's two channel in, it's got a trigger input. And the bottom one there has tracking generator built in, and that's a SR770. They both work fine. Um, they're so sensitive, I'll, I'll just show you, I've just got it set up. Um, so it's on the low low end, and I'll just put my finger, I'll have a look at the, the one at the top first. I'll just put my finger. There you go, just near the connector. And that's 50 hertz. There it goes, and related harmonics. And I'll do the other channel. There it is. This I think the other channel, the B channel, uh, is greatly attenuated, it's an internal attenuator. So I'll move my finger, and it should go down a little bit anyway. <laughs> Same on this one. I'll do this one at the bottom, this uh, one of the tracking, tracking generator. I'll stick my finger there, there goes 50 hertz up in the air with uh, associated harmonics. Let them all come down and I'll stick my finger on the other input and there's a slight change there. I mean, I shouldn't really put a cable in it, shouldn't I? But I'm just putting my <laughs> finger over the connector. You know, so we've got, a, we've got a resistor tail here. Uh, I'll stick that in there, there you go. There you go. There's me sticking the resistor tail into the B channel. And if I do it on the A channel, probably overload. So, see how we go. Yeah, I don't know if I'm getting it on there. Get in there, go. That's a bit bent. But, um, yeah, that's uh, 50 hertz. Yeah, the uh, tail on the resistor I'm using is bent, so it didn't go in the hole properly. And the top one. There we go, that got in, and uh, you can see it's all um, baselines going up and everything there. Down she goes, and uh, on the B channel, there you go. Take it out, and uh, it all falls down. There's enough leakage of 50 hertz, just to show there very slightly. So anyway, I got these two um, units for sale. Um, these have been well looked after. The SR760 at the top there, um, I think that probably, well, I paid a lot of money for these. <laughs> um, yeah, they'll, they'll work on um, uh, various voltages too. It'll work on um, uh, 110 volts, 220, 240. You set it up how you want. Now, as I say, these are located in Ballarat, Victoria. And I don't really want to ship them. Um, they're too hard for me to ship. It, it'd be like half a day's work doing all the shipping, um, you know, protection and so forth. And they probably cost a fortune. They'd, they're not light. They're heavy. They're very heavy units. So if anybody wants something that uh, looks down very, very low frequencies, as far as I remember too, these were used in some of the... Um, American submarines and they're hooked up for acoustic analysis. Uh, as you can see, both of them have jumped into calibrating offset. You can see that. They auto calibrate. 
the one at the top there has done its job. The bottom one has just finished and uh, drops down. So these do a lot of things. These have a heap of uh, um, various functions and so forth. Anyway, you can look these up on the internet too. There's manuals available on the net for these. We'll spin around here. Uh, yeah, where was I? There, there. There we go. Oh, here, here. This one. This is a a manual I found online. It's actually on the um, Sanford website. They're the manufacturer. It's um, their their website's called thinksrs.com. But uh, if you want to ever uh, have a look at these things online, what they do, I mean, this is I've been scrolling. I've only moved that far, so I want to go right up to the top. And it's got the see. Well, this is a user manual for the SR760, and basically goes into a hell of a lot um, about this detect. Uh, going to call it a detector, the spectrum analyzer. It's got line voltage selection and everything. It's very, very detailed and uh, basically says, don't stick your fingers in here, you're going to get zapped. And uh, yeah, it um, got a lot, like I say, there's a lot of information on these. Even getting started, how to set it up. Yeah, so anybody wants to do some low noise, uh, very low frequency um, spectrum analysis, these things um, got a noise figure of about 4.5 nanovolts per hertz. So it um, does a lot of self calibration stuff like that. Got market generator, well, the, the other one's got um, tracking generator. Um, that's the 770 has a tracking generator, six, the 760, sorry, um, it doesn't. So, yeah, you can uh, measure all sorts of um, um, things about low noise um, circuitry and so forth. Anyway, that's what that is. So they're up there at the moment, sitting there, running quite nicely. So if you're interested, um, let me know. Just go on the website, detectormods.com, use the contact details. And uh, yeah, um, I thought I'd just put that in there. Um, I want to get some new equipment. I want to get, uh, well, you know, I've got a budget. I want to spend about um, just on, I think it's about $25,000 on new equipment. So I don't want piles and piles of test equipment sitting in my room. There's enough here as it is. And like I say, Pretty sad when you've got a, um, a nice Hewlett Packard um, spectrum analyzer there, one of the best ones ever made, sitting in the cupboard. I should get that out and actually put it on the bench. Very, very handy um, equipment for doing low noise. I have been utilizing that thing there because that has FFT functions um, in that LaCroix 1.5 gigahertz rated uh, oscilloscope there. And you know, I've seriously been thinking about selling that as well. So that, that um, if you wanted to buy a new version of that, my God, you'd be up for eighty to $100,000. But uh, that LaCroix, uh, 1.5 gig source code there, what is she? She's an LC684DL and uh, in absolute mint condition. So if you're interested, you know, you made me a decent offer. I would uh, get rid of that. Well, you know, I'd sell that as well. Uh, I want to up actually update a lot of stuff I have, even though it's very good, you know. Even the probably the best, best uh, most useful oscilloscope I've got here is that Tektronix 2465. God, you know, to replace that. Um, that's an analog oscilloscope, but you know, they work so well. It's, they do things that the digital oscilloscopes, you know, don't look at in some cases. Uh, and that's why I had to go to that 1.5 gigahertz bandwidth in that LaCroix 
um, oscilloscope to actually look at very, very fast events. Uh, a lot of the lower um, sampling type digital oscilloscopes, uh, you know, with um, you know your 50 megahertz bandwidth, and that are very questionable trying to look at very fast transient events, usually won't see them. Um, these things here, they'll see anything you throw at them. They, they're bloody good at low frequency. These things are fantastic. So, yeah, um, that's for sale. I don't think I would sell that. It's very hard to replace. Try and get a good one. I, I, that's been, it's got new caps in it and everything, that one. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, worth its weight in gold. It's very, very good oscilloscope. Uh, that one there is also a very, very good oscilloscope. And, uh, yeah, it's got um, a, um, what do you want to call it, uh, LCD display in that. It's on a tube oscilloscope. And it's big and it weighs a ton. It's, you know, four channels and, uh, you know, does FFT, does a lot of mathematics stuff. Um, you know, you'd, you'd have to be a bit of a, a noggin to want something like that. But, yeah, I'm thinking of selling that as well. So if you're interested, just let me know and see what we can uh, work out, you know. Um, but, you know, the main ones I was going to um, depart were those ones there. So still running beautifully. But you got to remember, they're only 100 kilohertz bandwidth. They're made for doing very low noise. If you want to do audio work and stuff like that, they're absolutely fantastic for that. Um, ultrasonics. Uh, you want to detect uh, Russian nuclear submarines. Um, beautiful for that as well. Anyway, catch us.